Three, two, one. Hello, and welcome back to yet another monthly market update. My name is Curtis Hawkins, and I'm here with Brett Gurr this morning, and we're filming our first podcast in the new office. So mm -hmm. we've been kind of teasing it over the past couple podcasts, but we're finally here. We're not yeah. completely set up, but we're almost set up, and it's coming. It's looking great. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely, it's pretty exciting to. Well, again, we'll be the first real estate office on the west side. Yep. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So if you guys don't know where it is, it's on Colebrook Gate, which is the new commercial residential townhomes um, that are just being built by Strandville Living. We have one more listed. Well, there's four more that are pre-construction. Currently, they all have an offer except for one. So that's how quick they've gone since we yeah. started this. Wow. Through that's, this summer. That's so. crazy. Um, but yeah, we're in. We need to get some signage out front. So if you're driving by... We're here, but don't have any signage yet, so we're working on it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so let's go over the um, the numbers for September. Um, do you want to do numbers first, or do you want to get some news? Yeah, no, let's let's just get into the numbers okay. first. Why not? We'll talk about some, some news and some things afterwards. Uh, home good. sold for the month of September. We've got 183. August was 176, July 196, June 200. Uh, last year, this time was 152, which is kind of remarkable. Yep. Um, with 151 average on average, the year. Yeah. So, yeah, this a little is, bit slower last September. Actually, before we continue, the whole, all of these numbers are kind of blowing me out of the water here when we go mm -hmm. through them. So, we've sold almost 50 more houses than August. I know August is a little bit slower. Yeah. 50 more than August and like 30 more than last September. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Yeah. I didn't think the market was that cooking, but it is. It's very, very steady considering what the media is telling you. Uh, our market is very, very steady. We're actually overall pretty hot, uh, certainly. Mm -hmm. So average days on market, September saw 61 uh, August 52, July 51, June 58. This time last year, September saw 64 days on market and that five-year average of 78. This one's interesting because we've sold so many more homes and we have so little inventory, which we'll get into in the next numbers. Mm -hmm. So little inventory, so many homes sold, but yet average day on market has gone up a little bit. Yeah. That's kind of weird, hey? Yeah, it's a bit different how that uh how that affects it must be the the old ones are really sitting there and the new ones are going quick mm -hmm. well and and i think a contributing factor to that might be where we're headed uh later on in the statistics and that's uh average price mm -hmm. so maybe that's part of the okay. you know okay we'll get to that yep. little teaser there yep uh active homes on market saw september with 414 august saw 480 Actually, July. I almost want to see a stat of what's the lowest active homes on market right. number like mm. for the month because this is really low. Mm, okay. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. And and that continually seems to be the trend that we're finding. You know, we're getting less homes on market because lower inventory. Yeah. You know? Well, no, I think it's because to me, the way I would see it is nobody wants to sell their home because if they sell now, Right. Their interest rate is probably two or three percent, where if they yeah. sell now, they're going to have to get a six percent interest rate. So mm -hmm. probably don't want to sell unless you have to sell. Yeah, that's, right? that's certainly a variable that we're up against as well. Yep. You bet. Um, and June, June saw 481. September 538, or sorry, September of last year, we were at 538 active homes on market and a yearly average, a uh, five-year average of 641. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's definitely... Uh, some some crazy variables there yeah 200 yeah. over mm -hmm. two well, i guess 230 less homes on market than average yeah mm -hmm. whoa so what this means for sellers right now is if you're looking to sell if you need to sell mm -hmm. there's nothing else to choose from so it's like the perfect time yeah to get top dollar is like when there's nothing else to choose from that's when you want to sell right supply and demand absolutely yeah you're going to get really good value for your property right now um if it's especially within that price range that's hot. Yep. If it's in that higher end price range, got to be a little bit more realistic. But still, even though that is the case, it's definitely still a great market to be selling. Mm -hmm. uh, and that brings us to the average home price. Uh, September in Lethbridge 
we saw an average home price of 366,628, uh, which I believe in our, my recollection, the highest we've seen since we've started doing this was 351, if I recall. Uh, so September kind of blew that out of the market. Maybe there were some higher end homes that sold, uh, yeah. possibly a maybe one sold for a million dollars or two that I know there was one that had an offer earlier this month. I'm just going to look it up here just to see. Yeah. Yeah. It check it out. Holds between September. Okay. While you're looking that up, yep. we'll just go through the rest of them. August was 348,733. July was 328,376. June was 346,535. September this time last year, we were at a 325,862 average. And then five-year average uh, in Lethbridge, we are at 310,814. So certainly the trend is continually rising to uh, low inventory equals higher price point and supply and demand, like you said. Okay, so just looking at there, there was a 1.249 home that sold wow. um, over in Sandstone. So that would obviously increase the price a bit. There was also a 925,000 home that sold Okay, in Southridge. Um, what else? An 875 home, like sold for 860, 700. There's lots of homes over 600 that sold recently. Right. Hmm. Yeah, we don't, so we don't see often. Obviously, that's like the the higher higher end in Lethbridge for sure. Like average home price, like we just mm -hmm. said, is three sixty six. But yeah, um, with basically two over a million, one over eight hundred, one, two, three, four, five, six, six homes over seven. Hmm. Like, or, or sorry, six homes just on that seven hundred. Right, and then that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine over seven. Yeah, so. That's a, they're still moving. Yeah. yeah they're, you, they're still moving. If you take that out, um, it would probably bounce out a little bit more, but yeah. And, and definitely I think, uh, the catalyst for that is the province, other provinces moving here. People are coming here with some money and that's definitely the catalyst for that. So yep. even if they're buying a house for 700,000, they're still probably coming out significantly less bank and some money than where they were at before mm -hmm. with their uh, two bedroom condo out in uh, <laughs> one bedroom Richmond. Oh, right. Yes. One bedroom <laughs> for condo. 700 for sure. Yeah, exactly. So I, I have clients out in, um, uh, geez, I think Richmond area or something like right. BC. Yeah. They have a two bedroom main floor. It's kind of a cool layout. It's a two bedroom main floor apartment and there's like a walkthrough. So you can, you kind of get like this corner patio space being on the main level. Okay. Two yeah. bedroom though, like 930, 930,000. Wow. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'd look at this one that just sold here in Lethbridge for 900 and it's uh 331 square feet with mm -hmm. what size is the lot here? 0.63 acres of a lot backing onto the coolies, like right. Not even a comparison. Yeah, yeah. I got clients that sold a 625, whoop, 625 thousand dollar condo in uh, Chilliwack area as well. Yep. Came here, bought a 400 thousand dollar property, and they're they're laughing. Mm -hmm. They're loving it. They're banking the money. They're throwing themselves into retirement, basically. Sure. So yeah. Okay. Well, let's uh, look at a few other statistics here. Uh, our, our list to sale percentage, which we kind of get a little bored of each and every time we do it. So yeah. we'll maybe, maybe look at, uh, getting rid of that statistic, but, uh, it we'll seems get well, we're getting rid of it because it's always at 97 point something. Like yeah, it's always it's, so close. It's so. always, well, and maybe it's an attestment to the market. You know, if we did this, you know, four or five years ago, it'd be different. And yeah, obviously it would it just be 90. It average. would just be 95. Every yeah. Month. <laughs> Still not a very exciting statistic. Either way, we'll go through it. So yep. September was 97.3. And again, this is the original listing price to what the property sold for September. We've got 97.3 August saw 97.8 uh, July 97.5 and June 97.5 as well. Uh, last year, this time 96.3 three and the five-year average 95.34 so yep. um just means it's a tighter market it's, means it's a tighter market means it's still a seller's market nobody's getting a great bargain uh you're not going in writing an offer of three hundred thousand on a four hundred thousand dollar place and getting it yep. it's not happening no the um, um 
with I don't want to discourage buyers by saying that either. I just think that the deals aren't coming from your offer anymore being a buyer. The deal's mm-hmm. going to come from buying and holding it. Right. Right. Yeah. And in your experience, right, recently in the marketplace, uh, do things seem hotter right now or are there is there more competition when you're writing offers? How, um, how, what's your experience on that? I haven't run into a competing offer in a while, actually. Me neither. So, but like uh, even with whether it was a listing or a buyer, mm-hmm. like I haven't ran into competing offers. Right. Um, but any new listing that comes up seems to be going very quick. Yeah. But yeah, yeah good not ones, a lot of competition. The good ones are still going quick. In my experience, I've... I, I haven't had a whole lot of offers go into com- competition as well. Yeah. So maybe the buyers are just starting. And this is typically the time of year where people do kind of slow down a little bit. There are still the people that want to get in before Christmas time that are like, let's get an offer in. Let's get it done. Yeah. By the way, and if you do want to get in before Christmas, like mm-hmm. TikTok, yeah. like this month is yeah. basically it. Yeah. I've right? got some clients that want to get in before November and they're still kicking tires and it's just like, yeah, it's not okay. Happening. Yeah. <laughs> we need to be writing an offer last week. Yep. And uh, yep. if that's what we want to do. So, but either way, um, I guess that's crazy to say it's October 3rd. You want to hear something? You want to hear yeah. something crazier? So moved sure. in, we moved into our new house, into the commercial residential thing, right? So we're upstairs on the top level, and we face the back of some houses on Col- uh, Colbra Gate here. So right. It's actually this green one okay. <laughs> right yeah. behind me. So we're, I'm hanging up the new blinds, and they turn all their lights off. They put their Christmas tree up. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know yeah. who that is over there, yeah. but come on. It's mm-hmm. like... It's not even Halloween. Right. Yet. Yeah. At least Boyer wait roll. till Halloween. Yeah. I know, a, I know a few people like that. I got a couple of friends that messaged me just recently and they're like, I'm thinking about putting my Christmas tree up. <laughs> You're sick. Yeah. You're twisted. Yep. <laughs> you know? yeah. Just because the decorations know. are out at Costco mm-hmm. doesn't mean you have to put yeah. it up. I, I used to work with a guy that would listen to Christmas music, music in July. Really? No lie. And everybody was like, dude, come <laughs> on. And yeah, I weird <laughs> and you just i don't know i think you like to watch everybody squirm maybe yeah so sure um okay yeah so, october already yeah crazy um m- moving on another statistic that i thought was i was just looking for another statistic to kind of make things interesting mm-hmm. uh one other statistic that i found was total sales volume uh for residential properties within lethbridge um thought this would be kind of interesting so September, um, we saw a total sales volume of 67,092,894. August saw $61,377,85. July, $64,361,767. June saw... You might have to round these numbers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. 67, 61, right. 64, yeah. 69. Uh, June saw 69 million, 300,000. And uh, last year, this same time last year, we were at 49 million, 530,000. Yeah. So I guess so, it shows you, it does show you that it's obviously still busier, but then that yeah. big jump is obviously due to those 1.2, the 700s. Definitely. Yeah. Those, kind of those selling, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So. Yeah. So kind of something I thought I'd pull up, kind of interesting. Um, so yeah, any news articles that you've got that, uh, uh I yeah, I read a interesting there's one, but you go ahead. Well, I've seen the one that you have, I've seen multiple of, right. Um, I think it's a really hot talking point right now, but the one that I, there was two that I found that I thought were kind of interesting. And one of them was, um, landlords in Ontario, lots of them are starting to convert their long-term rentals into short-term rentals. And the big reason behind that is obviously one, they can make more money at it. Two, um, if there's any dispute between their renter and landlord, they can, they're saying right now it's taking eight months just to book an appointment with the tribunal so that if right. there's any issues, it's eight months before they even look at your issue. So if you got yeah. a tenant that's not paying rent, well, mm-hmm. you got to cover another mortgage payment for eight months until you get even this meeting. And then when they get to the meeting, they're saying that there's more rights or the the tenants are getting favored more than the landlord which yeah, i don't and, know any cases but right and i think that's fairly typical you know yeah. our, our system is designed to protect 
Well, this is Ontario. Canada. Well, so. for sure. Yeah. I think yeah. It's Canada as a whole for yeah. the most part, but, uh, uh, but yeah, that's definitely, uh, and in today's media internet world with Airbnbs, things like that, you can actually make more money with a short term rental. That's the yeah. problem is that typically in the past, they've, they just haven't been, haven't been occupied the entire time. Yeah. But now it's like, if you can occupy that the entire time, increase your property or your margins by having it full why not yeah. right so so and this is something that's gonna have to change mm -hmm. obviously because yeah. there's a housing shortage right so people are taking these yeah, long-term rentals that's not helping the housing shortage especially in ontario yes if they're taking those long-term rentals turning them to short-term rentals well that's taking mm -hmm. like even if 15 percent do that's a whole schwack ton yeah. of houses off the market that's going to increase property values so mm -hmm. if they want to change this they need to fix this so that landlords can make the same amount of money at very least right as rentals mm -hmm. and be confident that if they rent it and there's an issue that it's going right. to be solved. Yeah. I've never heard of a landlord that's kicking somebody out because they're being a good tenant and paying rent. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if those two things are covered, I'm pretty sure that, you know, they can figure out everything else, mm -hmm. but it, it's just nuts when, okay, so you're a landlord, your renter's not paying rent. You go through the proper steps to get them out, and it's taking eight months, and then they can stay there anyway. Like, how right. does that? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, yeah. It's always I've I've been now. I well, I I was a renter at one point in time, and when you when you read through the landlord tenant act, you're like, huh, maybe I don't. <laughs> this doesn't help me much, you know. So it's definitely exactly. uh, it certainly leans towards the tenant, and obviously in certain cases, there's been landlords that have taken advantage of their tenants of course um and that's kind of what it's there for but at the same point in time um you know things have become a little bit more difficult for well i say that things have not become more difficult for landlords recently in the recent years but uh yeah it's just kind of a little bit uh something that might have to change moving forward kind of tough to say but we'll see how it goes yep um yeah and, uh, um an article that I found just recently simply went through uh, Alberta's economy and how, you know, oil production is down, the amount of oil, but yet our economy is significantly bolstered due to everybody coming here from the other province. The, the yeah. article said that in, in the coming census year, we're going to see a 4.4% boom in our population which, which 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 is massive you know um that's definitely huge which over. here is obviously going to put pressure on housing infrastructure yeah hospitals all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. too right yeah so yeah i hope they see it coming and we start working towards some stuff mm -hmm. speaking of which i think uh the new premier is trying to get rid of cpp and do an alberta right plan. i heard something about that yeah and, and it there i think she's re like re what's it called reforming the um okay uh ahs alberta health services because mm. it's all centralized right now so they right. want to split it up a little bit more so that because it's centralized but then we have three main cities right right Calgary, edmonton which i mm -hmm. think get the most attention even even lethbridge definitely and there's so many smaller communities that they're kind of get left mm -hmm. like, especially in central alberta it seems like i was reading articles about pinoca and red deer um and with Tasquin, how their hospitals been shut down so much recently. That, oh, really? Yeah, that mm. they want to like restructure the whole AHS system to help out the smaller communities a little bit more. Which right. Probably okay. a good thing, but I don't know. Interesting. I, I don't know enough to make a comment. Yeah, on. yeah, true. I don't really follow that enough to say yay or nay. Um, I do know that there's a drastic difference between what uh you know a hospital in downtown calgary requires over a hospital in raymond alberta um yeah you know well i think a little here, bit <laughs> it's, it's a little, a little bit, bit different bit structured for but. sure and like what i always tell people too is like if you're or what i've done in the past is like hospital's busy if you need to go to the hospital mm -hmm. like literally go to raymond They're yeah, never yeah. Like, Shh, don't wreck our secret <laughs> <laughs> oh now everybody's gonna be in raymond <laughs> Oops. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, uh, I mean, no, <laughs> no. Lethbridge is, yeah. Well, I've, I've been guilty of that as well. Yeah. You know, you're you're in and out in forty minutes, and uh, other mm -hmm. other times you're you're there for six hours, right? So, mm-hmm. Oh, um, the other one that I saw this morning was 
there was an expert that was an expert from BMO. I guess he's a money markets guy at uh, BMO. Okay. And he was on an interview with BNN and he told, or sorry, with Bloomberg. And he told Bloomberg that 2023 is the end of hikes. So they, they are expecting there might be one more before the end of the year. Right. But after that, they're saying there's going to be no more in 2024. Okay. Yeah. And it's I, obviously a prediction. Nobody I, knows, I could but. see that. Yeah. Nobody can look into that crystal ball. I, I did could watch see that. the interview and he seemed very confident. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully he knows what he's talking about because that'd be, that'd be good. Yep. Um, you know, we definitely have seen enough of the hikes in, in our everybody's well, opinion. I wish somebody could explain this to me because I still don't understand, but they're saying a big driver in interest rates is housing costs. Right. Well, we're raising interest rates and that increases your mortgage costs. So mm -hmm. like, well, how does... <laughs> Right. How yeah. we're fighting fire with fire here. It yeah, like, but yeah definitely. Well, in turn... Um, you know, with interest rates, housing costs should s significantly drop, but we haven't been seeing that just due to supply no, and, and demand. And I guess and right? I shouldn't say that because um, they are increasing here. The market's still good here. But if mm -hmm. you do look in Ontario and BC, their markets are starting to come down. I, I would certainly think that their home prices are dropping. They are. But they saw an insane jump. They saw, yeah. I, I don't know the statistics of it, but I think they saw a 20% jump in year housing prices. Year. In yeah, maybe even more than that over COVID. Yeah. So uh, it was twenty percent every year. Exactly, which is what, nuts. what goes up must come down. You know, you bought a stock, woohoo! You doubled your money. Well, now you're only up one and a yeah, half. Yeah, wait a month, <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> you know? or a day, yeah. and uh, down it goes. Right. So, well, so yeah. And that being said, if you're if you're thinking that most people always say, "Oh, I'm waiting for the bottom of the market." Mm -hmm. Well, if there are no more interest rate hikes, this could right. be it. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. There was a ton of people in Lethbridge that said, "Oh, I'm waiting for the market to crash." Right, and it's mm -hmm. literally continued to climb. And if this is the end of it, yeah, that they're not coming down. So. Well, and that's the benefit of our market, right? Is we're always a gradual. You know, it's a it's a two percent increase every year yep. that we have a tendency to see. Right, even over the last ten years you know, our property values have gone up, but not a ton. Yep. We're not seeing that 20, 30% sure. every year. So just if you're an investor, it just makes for uh, a safe investment, yep. you know, and here. Buy and hold. That's yeah, you can do. exactly. You're yep. not going to lose your shorts in the next two years. If we have a market dip, well, it's going to dip 5%, you okay. know, <laughs> if that, right? I remember we bought, we have a suited house that we bought brand new. Uh, we bought it. I've told this story before. We bought it for 370 And at the time we were like, what are we doing? This is too expensive. We shouldn't be buying a rental new, like, oh, it's too much. Uh, at the time it was 370 It was like the most expensive rental you could buy. Right. Now they're selling. I, there was one that had an offer I should check. It was listed at 470 mm -hmm. Like they were selling at 430 for a while. Somebody just listed theirs for 470 and got an offer. Right. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. So mm -hmm. I'm looking at these, there's brand new ones that are similar that I, you can buy them from whichever builder, but they got a suited plan and they're all about 480 to 510. Right. Which is insane for right now. Mm -hmm. And you think you're stupid for buying one, but I thought that back then. So yeah, I'm looking at those and being like, eh, maybe I should get one. Who knows? It, it's never a bad time, right? Yep. It's again, especially in this market. Yeah. Buying there old. have been times in 08 where people have bought homes at the peak and then they were kind of upside down for a couple of years, two or maybe five years, but eventually yep. it all came back around. And, you know, to your well, story, I remember my parents, they, when we moved out of the house, they bought a brand new house in, in uh, Uplands. And my dad was like, oh, it's $180,000. <laughs> it's so much money, right? <laughs> and you're just like, and looking he just, back. yeah, looking back and it's like, well, and yeah, that house is 420 today. So, yeah. and that's not that 20 years later, you know? Exactly. So, yep. yeah, it's definitely not, uh, uh, never a bad time to buy. Long no. story short. And you just, you know, buy and hold. And that's what I was, I was thinking about. Um, if I'm going to get another rental in the future, like, do I get one that's a little bit older and I know it's a better deal? Right. Or do you go new? Mm hmm. Because at the end of the day, if you're, you just got to hold it. Like, yeah, you can buy one that's a couple years old, but you know that you're going to have to put some work into it sooner mm -hmm. than if you buy a new one. Right. And if you're going to hold it for a long term anyway, 
Like it's mm-hmm. way less work to buy a brand new one. And if you're going to hold it for 20 years, what's the difference? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can certainly increase your profit margin by buying the old, but then again, at today's cost of doing those renovations, maybe it's not as profitable as it once was, yeah. right? Going in, gutting a place, turn, you know, like, man, some kitchens sometimes are $80,000 to put in a new kitchen. Yep. It's ridiculous, you know? So, um, I yeah. Mean, yeah. I'm and, not even talking about a flip. I'm just talking about like a, like yeah, a just, five, 10 year old house, right? Exactly. Like there's still maintenance that has to be done. So mm-hmm. it's like, yeah. Do I want to do a bunch of maintenance in the right. next five, 10 years or do or I want just, to buy new? Yeah. In the next 10 years I'll have like le- next to nothing mm-hmm. to have to do. Right. Yeah. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah, no, that's uh, and of course, then you're looking at the you, you name your price for revenue, and you're looking at the, you know, you get to you'll get tons of people that'll come in, want to view it, and everybody wants to live for in new? a brand new shiny oh, place, yeah, for sure. you know, that has no dings in the walls, well, and, and everybody just wants the one to do that. rule I always live by, and I always tell my clients too, is if you get a nice rental, you'll mm-hmm. get nice renters. Right. If you get a not so nice <laughs> rental, you're gonna probably or yeah. a rental, you're probably not gonna get not so nice. Uh, renters for the most part. Very true. Yeah. Uh, are the exceptions of course, uh, for but, sure. But yeah, I absolutely. And that's certainly yeah, real. It's, it's like a snowball effect either mm-hmm. way. Right. So yeah, definitely. Anyway. Okay. Uh, anything else to hit on that's any other points? That's all I got. Yeah. That's all, got. all I got too. I think we're probably good on that. Um, uh, um, yeah. Thank you guys so much for joining yet another monthly market update. We'll be back again next month for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, if you guys like this and want to see more, be sure to hit that subscribe button for all, follow me or Brett on social media and we'll see you guys on the next one. Yeah. Take care guys. Goodbye.